This is MPB Think Radio. Mississippi is our mission. You're listening to an encore presentation on MPB Think Radio. We're not able to take your call right now, but you can always reach us through email. The address is garden at mpbonline.org. This is Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Think Radio. Okie dokie, folks. Welcome back. Horticulture is held to rushing, and we're going to talk about gardening. Hope you're up for it. If you if you are, give us a call. It's toll free, one eight seven seven MPB ring. I know it's hot. I know it's humid. I know it might rain, but you know, uh, we can garden anytime, anytime in Mississippi. So if you don't feel like getting out and doing stuff right now, think about it next week or do a little bit to get ready for it. So we've got plenty of time to, to grow stuff. It's a little bit early for, for winter stuff like pansies and cabbages and kale and uh, violas and all those kind of cool season things. And a little bit towards the tail end of planting summer stuff. But um, So take a week off. Go out and dig around your dirt. Get you some mulch. Think about getting some stuff uh, ready to plant a little bit later and enjoy what's out there right now. I noticed that uh, the red spider lilies are starting to pop up, and they usually mean it's time to go back to school. And speaking of which, I know, Java, you had a little scare last week with your with your son. He was out of school for a week. How's he doing this week? Yeah, he's doing fine, man. He um He's back in school now, and uh, I was listening uh, last week when Jay Field did for me um and you know you uh were mentioning that i was at home uh playing mr mom <laughs> yeah that's let's go cool. that that well but everything's cool right yeah every everything's fine man um uh in full disclosure um he, he tested positive for um for covid but um you know we were lucky and didn't have uh, a lot of symptoms and uh yeah. you know we came around to being and like i said he's he's back at school now and and uh ready to learn all righty, man. Well, listen, I'm a little bit hoarse because I've been out whooped it up. I went to a to a botanic garden yesterday, and I talked and talked and talked. And uh, it's a brand new, but the Royal Horticulture Society has uh, uh, five or six major gardens. They got like 200 smaller gardens, uh, uh, co- connected gardens. But two, uh, the, the the brand new one uh, in a place called Bridgewater. It's the largest new botanic garden in Europe. It just opened up, and I'm the first American journalist uh, to be invited in to, to come in. Of course, I might be the only American journalist in England right now, uh, but I went spent a whole day yesterday uh, scooting around, poking under things, taking pictures, taking notes, and uh, it's real interesting. I'm going to work on a blog uh, this weekend, uh, but I did post some pictures on the Mississippi Gardening Facebook page. If anybody is is on that or if you just want to check it out, uh, Mississippi Gardening on Facebook. You don't have to join to scroll down to look at stuff, but if you'll scroll down oh, through four or five things where people are talking about their butterflies and their flowers and stuff, you'll come to a, a blog I did about how they are using our native flowers, our wildflower, our weeds are among the showiest plants in England's newest Royal Horticulture Society, Society Botanic Garden. It's astounding. The combination of flowers, long borders, uh, metal plants, containers that are full of stuff that that is in full bloom in Mississippi. And somebody said, well, we, well, I wish I could do that in Mississippi. I'm thinking, get a shovel, dig a hole, stick some weeds in it. It really works. So I'm really, really pleased that uh, the foremost, the best-looking flowers in the newest botanic garden in Europe is largely American natives, Mississippi natives. And uh, we can do that here. So anyway, that's what I've been up to. Now, Felder, Uh, I I know you said um, it's full of our weeds because a lot of times, you know, when when people get the weeds in their garden, they're trying to pull them up. So how does that translate? (laughs) Well, you know, there's a whole lot of plants that people, you know, we, we call them weeds when they grow in ditch banks or along the roadside or in fields and things like that. I'll give you an example, goldenrod. You know, goldenrod, everybody thinks it makes them sneeze. Nobody's allergic to goldenrod. And it's one of the top 10 flowering perennials in, in British gardens. But because we have so much of it growing in our fields, 
people don't want to put it in, in, in their gardens, even though it's loaded with butterflies and bees and pollinators, and you can eat it, and it's medicinal. There's so many benefits. It's an excellent cut flower. It doesn't need water. But uh, because it grows everywhere, a lot of people call it weeds. Um, I'll just give you an example of some of the, the plants that I took pictures of yesterday. Asters, Leatris, narrowly sunflower, wild azuratum, goldenrod, sumac, swamp milkweed, summer phlox, coreopsis, purple coneflowers, a monarda, on and on and on. And these are plants that grow wild in Mississippi. And you put them in, in a nice garden, maybe with a daylily or something like that, and it can be stunning. And uh, it just happens to be native plants. So I'm not saying plant them because they're native, but because they're native, they grow well for us. And, it, and uh, they think they're good enough to put in a Royal Horticulture Society garden. I think they belong in our garden, too. So there's that. <laughs> now I now now I get it. I see we, we have an overabundance, so sometimes we just like, ah, no, we don't need that. Yeah, that's right. Hey, by the way, I, I don't know if you tuned in last week when Jay White uh, uh, hosted for you, I mean, uh, um, uh, produced for you while you were at home uh, with, with your son. But uh, have you ever heard that, that song by Eric Bird in the war called Spill the Wine? I, I I I heard y'all talking about it, but because I, I know the um, the Isley Brothers uh, spill the wine. It, I, I think it's the same song. I okay, okay, is, spill the wine, kiss that girl. Yeah, yeah, that's it. But uh, there, there's a great line in there. It's in there. There I was, an overfed, long-haired, leaping gnome, and I'm thinking that's me. I'm an overfed, long-haired, leaping gnome. <laughs> I'm just saying. He'll put you in a garden, Felder. <laughs> there you there you go. Hey, uh, if uh, people want to give us a call, uh, the line is open today. Uh, yes, sir. We have Kevin Feld, uh, uh, Kevin Farrell right here at the phones, ready to greet everybody. One eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. That's uh, MPB ring one eight seven seven MPB ring. All righty, man. Uh, I, I, like I say, I've been I've been keeping in touch with what's in what's going on in Mississippi gardens and you know around us, Alabama, Louisiana, Tennessee, Arkansas, and uh, we're going to be talking live about it in the studio because i'm coming home next week i'm actually it's going to smack me in the face when we get off the airplane going from 60 degrees to whatever it is in mississippi but i'm coming home next week man well just uh i mean i know you're used to it but it's going to be a, a, a slight adjustment because this morning or uh, during the the news uh i noticed that the humidity is at 100 <laughs> percent <laughs> You know, that's not just so thick you can lick it. You can drink it. Just walk around your cup. I can wash my coffee cup just walking around with it, right? That is, you know, a, that is a, a lot. Yeah. Uh, somebody sent a picture in and said that they're red spider, spider lilies are starting to bloom. These are the plants, that, the flowers that come up with no leaves on them, and they're red. And uh, they're real interesting, but I would like to mention if if, uh, if you have them or if you'd like to have them, uh, when these flowers come up with no leaves, uh, as soon as they start to fade, they're already going to start growing their roots for, for wintertime. In another month and a half or two months, they'll put up leaves. It looks sort of like striped monkey grass. But if you want the red spider lilies, this is a good time to get them because you can see where they are, and they're at the beginning of the growing season. If you wait much later, you're not going to be able to find them. Um, but also, this is the best time to, to dig and, and divide. And every one that you, that you dig up is going to have a, just a handful of bulbs. Stick some of them back in that hole and go in and plant them in your own garden. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's one of the tips. we got plenty of stuff I want to talk about. Let's see what you want to talk about. And we're going to start out in Neshoba County talking with Bill. Hey, Bill, good morning. Good morning. How you doing? So far, so good. What's up with you? Well, uh, yesterday my wife said go out there and cut all of the uh, uh, heads off, a dead head, all of the crepe myrtle. So yeah. I spent I spent a while doing that. While I was doing that, I was wondering: Is deadheading crepe myrtle going to make them or encourage them to make more flowers? Well, as a matter of fact, it does. You know, if you if you don't cut them back, then they make those little seeds that look, look like little marbles. And right. So they, yeah. They're, 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 they're putting all their energy into making seeds, and you know, and instead, if you cut them back, that frustrates them, and then immediately put out new growth and try to flower again. So the, you know, there's a handful of plants that the more you cut, the faster they rebloom. Uh, Althea or Rose of Sharon is one. Uh, crepe myrtles, uh, butterfly bush, 
if you cut the faded flowers off, they'll quickly put out new growth and bloom again. So, you know, she did right and you did right. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. And okay. I got a question about uh, I have uh, some grapes that this is their first year. They're, I think they're supper nogs. I make the purple grape. Right. Uh, so they, uh, so they're individuals. But uh, you know, I, I pulled one yesterday, and it was purple on the one side, but it was green on the other. Yeah. And uh, and it really wasn't ready because it tasted terrible. Yeah. How do I, how how do I t- I can't get on all sides <laughs> of the, these grapes. How do I tell when they're ready to pick? Well, a couple of things. First of all, you have a type of muscadine. A lot of people muscadine. call muscadines, yeah, a lot of people call the, the bronze color ones. They call them scuppernongs, and that's just uh-huh. one type of bronze muscadine, but they call uh, it all that. Okay. But, but uh, usually they start ripening towards the end of April, uh, excuse me, August, 1st of September, early September. So it's a little bit early for them uh, by, by a couple of weeks. You know, what you can you can almost start smelling them when they're right, but but just go out in the habit of just squeezing a few and they start feeling really, really soft, you can go ahead and pull them then. You'll also notice uh, that sometimes you'll start seeing yellow jackets and other bees and stuff after the after the the sweet sap as it starts coming out of the berries. So let's give them another couple of weeks and just, just pinch a couple and if they feel nice and soft, bite into it and see what happens. Okay, great. Good advice. Thank you. All righty. Appreciate it, Bill. Thank you, man. Have a great day. Bye-bye. You know, I'm getting a lot of emails right now about army worms, which are the larvae, these little generic little moth-type things. And there's lots of them this year because of all the rain. Usually there's just one big flush of them, and it gets so hot and dry we don't see anymore. But there's been so much rain that I suspect we're going to start seeing army worms the rest of this month, even into September. So if you've got a lawn and it seems to be getting real thin, go out and check your army worms. It's not really practical to spray for them, but if you do want to spray, make sure you get something that's for, uh, you know, that, that's for, 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 for caterpillars uh, because you don't want to be killing everything else out there too. But if you can, instead of spraying for them, if you'll just put out some fertilizer, you know, this is the time of year to start thinking about getting the lawn ready for winter. We call it winterizing. A lot of people wait till winter. But what you want to do is you're trying to get the lawn ready for winter. And August is the time to put on your late season fertilizer just a little bit. And that will help it put out some strong new growth and repair the damage that the armyworms are doing. So it will help your lawn uh, without really having to put a bunch of pesticides out there. So, anyway, we're going to take a little short break. If you want to give me a call, it's live, toll-free, 1-877-MPB-RING. I know your spider lilies are blooming. I know your rope sharing is blooming. Uh, time to propagate them both. Dig up and move some spider lilies. Uh, Althea's or Rosa Sharon root in water. It's a terrific summer blooming plant. So there's plenty of stuff we can be doing right now without really working up a sweat. Uh, uh, although just walking outside is enough to work out a sweat. Anyway, I'm for the closest Phil Rushing here on MPB, the Gestalt Gardener. We can take a little break and come back with your phones uh, because it is live and free right now. Give us a call and we'll be right back with more of the Gestalt Gardener right after this. <laughs> Okie dokie, folks. Welcome back. Horticulture's fell to Russia, and you want to give me a call, bring it on, and we're going to slide up to Columbus, Mississippi. Good morning, Diana. How are you today? Good morning, Zelda. I am just great. Thanks for talking yeah. to me. Sure. I have got a question concerning mulch. We are great believers in mulch, but it seems like every time I bring a new load in, and I get it by the truckload, uh, <laughs> I wind up with I will wind up with lots of weeds in it. And I would like to hear your recommendation for how I can take care of that, other than weeding the rest of the season. Well, it's a good question. I don't know where you're getting your mulch from that is so weedy. I mean, that's, you know, that's a real concern right there. And this, this sounds kind of weird, but it's kind of job I've got. But uh, when I get back next week, in three weeks, I'm actually going up to Memphis to, to meet with the, 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 the National Soil and Mulch Council. 
And uh, they're real con- yeah, I mean, they're real concerned about the quality of mulch that's coming out. So if you're getting something that's coming from like a farm or something, it's going to be full of weed seeds. What I prefer to do, and a lot of people like pine straw. They, they like pine straw. It's easy. It's fairly cheap. It looks nice. I have a problem with it because you have to put it uh, three or four inches deep for it to work, and it packs down and doesn't really feed the soil because it takes so long to go away. But I prefer to use chipped or uh, bark or, or, or chipped wood. Um, it's a little bit more expensive to get it by the bag, but it, it's not going to have weeds in it. And I like it because you only have to put an inch or two out there, and it does the job, and it slowly breaks down and actually feeds the soil. Uh, the only problem I've got with uh, with the bark is if it's near the sidewalk or the driveway, it's going to float away in a rain. But uh, yeah. I just go with I, I just go with bark or shredded uh, sh- shredded wood or, or bark because it's just easier and it should be weed free. So where where are you getting your 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 mulch from? Well, we have a local supplier here who su- who supplies like the school system and the local businesses does all that kind of good stuff. And we're, yeah. we were we were using hardwood mulch, uh, hardwood shredded yeah. hardwood, but right. it became so hard to get that we've now moved on to the shredded softwood, and yeah. there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of difference between the two. No, 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 it's, it's, it's really not. It's, it's very little difference in, in in those. You know, the biggest difference between pine straw and then all other mulch. The only kind right. of shredded mulch that I would not use. And this is sold, you know, all the big box stores sell cypress mulch. And there's some real serious issues about whether it's a sustainable thing. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. but anyway, uh, in the short run, what you can do is, you know, when you start seeing the weeds first coming up, they would be coming from, from seeds, I guess. Just simply take a rake and move it back and forth just to sort of rough it up. And that should disrupt the, the seedlings enough where they don't have a chance to get started. But Okay. You know, and these are, these are coming from the mulch. They're not coming up through it out of your dirt, are they? They seem to be coming up from the mulch. When I weed, it's incredibly easy to pull them up. It's just well, what, there's a you, lot of them. What, yeah, what you might want to do uh, if you've got that much mulch is to buy it a little ahead of time and then sort of spread it out a little bit and wet it down and see if you can get the, the weeds to pre-sprout before you okay. put the mulch in your garden. That That might help. Okay, okay. So I couldn't do something. This sounds ridiculous. I couldn't do something like leave it on the trailer for a few days and round up it real good, right? No, no. Roundup works. I would only really recommend roundup for things that are hard to kill, perennial weeds, where you need to kill something, roots and all. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, these, these are coming up from seeds. You know, it's a way, you know, I, I don't have a real problem using roundup, uh, you know, if it's used wisely, but that's really not the best use. That's a the best will do much. that. Okay. Just, yeah, if you just spread it out and uh, and you know and just tr- take a you know rake it up, it, in other words, pre-sprout the seed. One thing you could do that might help would be if you pile it up and throw a little fer- little nitrogen fertilizer on there. That'll heat it up so much. A lot of times that can kill the weeds. But oh, in general, okay. it, it's going to boil down to ma- mainly what we call mechanical control. You know, uh, hoeing mm-hmm. or, we- or, or raking that kind of thing. I wish it was an okay. easier solution. Okay. That's great. That's what I needed to know. Okay, Diana. Thank you for calling. Good luck on it. Thank, thank Nobody, you. you bye bye. Now we're going to slide just down the road a little bit from Columbus to Maven. Hey, Ruth. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm a little wet, but other than that, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> I got some small yeah. stuff seeds planted. Uh, what I'm calling about is that I wanted to put some chamomile. Uh, around some places in my yard, and I was looking for a variety called Trende, T-R-E-N-E-A-G-U-E. The only place that I could find it was in England, and they said they couldn't ship to the USA. I tried to look it up to see maybe it doesn't grow here. I couldn't find anything about it. It just tells you, you know, what kind of soil it needs, but it doesn't say this will not grow in Mississippi. So I don't know why I can't find any. You know, and, and that's really strange because chamomile, as popular as it is, I don't know anybody who's grown chamomile in Mississippi. It might just because nobody has any trouble with it, they don't give me a call about it, or maybe it does do it. I've never grown it myself, so I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look that one up, which, which by the way, well, I do. When we, well, the, the seeds for the Roman and the German you can get, but that gets taller and makes flowers, and this one is uh-huh. only supposed to go two to four inches tall. It doesn't make a lot of flowers, very few flowers, but it's supposed to smell real good, and you can walk on it after a couple of months. 
Yeah. So this is a different, a low-growing variety that would be really good in some of my spots. And, um, and what, 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 what was the name of it again? Trenegue, T-R-E-N-E-A-G-U-E. And it said that you cannot plant that from seed. So I can't even get seed. You have to take it from cuttings. So and, and they, you can buy plants, but only the only ones I could find were in England. Yeah, I, I see they, it right now. It's, it's a non-flowering clone, which means it doesn't make seed. I just found that out. And, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, so so right off the bat, that's the reason you can't get it because it only grows from plants, and they can't ship plants in. Uh, uh, I mean, what, is it because I, of diseases or something? What, why is? Yeah, it? Oh yeah, yeah. We 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 have we have real strict things. I mean, I have USDA cars and all sorts of stuff, and I can't bring seeds in unless they're from a commercial place and sealed up. You know, we have okay. real strong things that way. Can't can't introduce plants because of of insect pathogen type things. But I'd be real surprised if you couldn't find it someplace. I'm just not sure how well chamomile does in our heat and humidity. I see it uh, a lot in in European gardens. I see it in New England. I see it in California, but I've just never seen it growing. Well, I've I've grown the tall kind that you make tea with, and it did really well. But, you know, the variety I want now is not for tea. I want it for a ground cover. Yeah, well, the Trini, and I, I just don't know. I, I just okay. don't know. I, mean, and, right. uh, well, I, I just looked at some pictures of it, and oddly enough, it's a plant that I have seen. I just didn't think about it. I didn't know what it was. But when I look at pictures uh, of it, it is used in, in, of course, the English are real bad. They don't have any bare ground. And, you know, if there's any ground or mulch showing, they plant stuff. So I've seen this right. growing in with other things. I don't know how well it takes the, uh, the a lot of foot traffic if you've got dogs or anything like that. But anyway, let me I'll, I'll do a little bit of research. Let me see what I can come up with. All right. Well, I, I appreciate it because if if uh, if you if you don't if you can't find it, then it can't be found. So that'll I will be satisfied with that. that. It's really funny now that I see a picture. I've seen it before, but I've never heard of it before. So thank you for teaching me about that. Well, thank you so much. And, and have a good. One- and, and we do know why you can't get it. It does not make seeds, so you got to get right. the plants. Right. All right. Well, thank you so much. Have a, have a okay. good day. Bye-bye. Good luck on it. Thank okay. you. Okay. You bet. Okay. Let's take a – before we go to our cheesy music, let's go to our New Orleans and talk with Glenn. Hey, Glenn, good morning. Good morning, Felton. I, I really appreciate you uh, quoting the uh, Marvel song, Spill the Wine, but it was Eric Burden declares yeah. war, which eventually became the band War. But the fact yeah. that you could quote those lies about a long-haired, overfed, leaping gnome, tremendous. Enjoy your show. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. That's it? <laughs> Job. I, guess that was, I guess that was it. Thank you, Thank you Glenn, for adding yeah. that atmosphere to our show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. Listen, I got a fairly short tune. I, it's, it's an earworm. I, I heard it the other day. I could not get it out of my head. So I said, let's play this a cheesy music today. A little short thing to see if that doesn't get it out of my head. But uh, meanwhile, folks, we've got 30 minutes of just talking about gardening. If I don't know something, I'm okay with that because I can learn. So if you got some things you want to chat about, give us a call. It is toll-free. It's live. Uh, Mississippi Public Broadcasting brings these local-produced pr- programs uh, to you every week, and I love talking about gardening. So anyway, give us a call. We'll give the phone numbers after this a short break, but I'm Horticulture's Felder Rushing. Me and Java Chapman and the other folks at MPB, we're going to take about a three-minute break and come back with more of the Gestalt Gardener right after this. Okie dokie folks, welcome back. Ibbity bobbity boo, y'all. Horticulture's still to rush, and we'll be talking about gardening. If you want to give us a call, it's toll free 1 877 MPB ring. I've just been online uh, while y'all are getting that earworm going, and uh, that chamomile called Trinique. Tr- Trinique. Uh, I cannot find a source in the United States, it's all over England. And I've been all these UK sites, but for some reason I can't find a source in the United States. It'll have to be a mail order plant because it does not come true to seed. But anyway, living and learning. Uh, meanwhile, let's go down to Covington, Louisiana. Polly, thank you for holding. How are you this morning? I'm good. How are you? Good. So far, so good. I'm getting a little good. hoarse because I'm excited. 
I know. But let me just tell you one thing. Today, the heat index is 115 degrees. So be prepared. <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know what I, to I got say. A, I got a question about my fig tree. Um, okay. I want to prune it, but can I prune it when the leaves are still vibrant and pretty and green, or should I wait until they fall off? Well, it's it's really, you know, it, it's not. I don't know how to answer this without getting real general, but in general, okay. they're pruned in the winter time and then the the middle of the summer. Uh, to, so they put out the. the you cut them in the winter time, and then you cut on the new growth in in the summertime. But if you yeah. prune them from between now and I'm gonna say between the the end of this month and and the the winter time, they're gonna put out some new growth that's gonna get frozen. So in general, we don't oh. do a lot of pruning past you know middle of July or so if you can help it. So okay. What, what okay. Is, what is it? What what is it? You, why do they need pruning? Is it just too big? I just want to keep it manageable because I'm only five feet tall. I don't want it to, you know. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's how I'm doing mine. I planted mine a couple of three years ago, and I cut it off about a foot high to make it branch out, and then I cut those to make those branch out, and then I cut okay. those. So I've got a bush that's only about uh, four feet tall, but it's about six feet wide. But okay. so 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 you can you can prune on it now if you're just trying to thicken it up. So if you've got uh-huh. some long stuff, follow it from the tip. Back to where it started this past spring, and you uh-huh. can cut up up to about half of that off. Okay, and that's what. It'll, and it'll still uh, uh, do okay next year. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Well, thank you very much, and glad okay. you're going to be home soon. Bye bye. Thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, I had my boy go by check sure my, make sure my air conditioning working, and he said, "Yep, it's working, and it's got his tongue hanging out on the ground, but it's still working." So. Uh, Anyway, give us a call, toll-free, 1-877-MPB-RING. One of the things that, that I had, had, uh, was, had was looking forward to doing was getting ready for fall by digging some dirt. I was in a, a – uh, uh, as a, a community gardens in England called allotments because all the villages – have got land that they that they provide for people to have little small gardens in little community gardens, uh, and I was in the on the allotment the other day taking some some photographs, and uh, this woman came out and know what I was up to, and we were end up chatting about her her little garden. Turns out she's kind of a newbie; she's only been gardening a couple of years, but she found out that she grows strawberries in bags of cheap potting soil up off the ground. She's got these frames made with the bags of potting soil sitting on top, sort of like on the top of a fence rail. And she grows strawberries in those because she said they don't have to be watered as much as hanging baskets and pots. And she put up many pints of strawberries just growing in potting soil. And she said when the potting soil gets used up, she just jumps it in the flower beds and, and takes it from there. But I thought it was real interesting. The strawberries grow better in bags of cheap potting soil, um, and the slugs can't get to it. Uh, but also, she said in a regular bed, she doesn't pull stuff up in the fall or in the spring when she's getting ready to, to, to harvest, when she's getting ready to clear the garden off. She cuts off whatever grew and then plants new stuff in between those and then alternates it back and forth and back and forth. And the stuff she cuts back as it decomposes, the worms turn it into good dirt. So basically, she just cuts stuff down, mulches it and plant stuff in between the stubs of what she just cut down, and she said it's been working just fine. Hey, let's slide up to, uh, to Oklahoma, see what Milton's up to. Morning, Milton. How are you, sir? I'm okay. Good. I have a question. Mm-hmm. I saw a apple tree. It has Granny Smith and the little green look like cran apples or cranberries, but I don't think these little apples are edible. Huh. But y'all are well, one tree. Well, what happens is uh, when when you buy a fruit tree these days, it's being grafted, and uh, whatever they graft is what you want. But a lot of times, uh, a sprout will come up below the graft. That's whatever the rootstock is, and usually it's not a great fruit. So in other words, they they take the good stuff and stick it on the roots of something else, and the something else sometimes sprout. And uh, so they'll they'll be edible. They just won't taste very good. Now, they won't be poison or anything like that. They may have little seeds in there, but it's sort of like crab apples. You know, they're just little apples is all. Well, so, the, now, it's two different, literally two different type trees. 
And this yeah. is the only tree I've ever seen anywhere. I got pictures of it. Yeah. And um, it's the weirdest thing that well, well, comes try, out try of one truck. Well, try this. The, uh, the part that's got the little apples on it. Uh, follow those twigs to the branch of the limbs and see where that part is connected to the main trunk. And if this and if this sprouted from the main trunk more than about knee high, then you've got your new variety somehow. But if it, if That's you can follow is, that, man. well, if you can follow that all the way back down, and that part of the tree is connected down near the ground, that's just a rootstock that sprouted out, and that happens a lot with fruit trees. So um, you know we we see that with with almost any kind of grafted thing. So anyway, follow it back and see where it, where it actually connects to the tree. If it's down close to the ground, that's just the rootstock graft uh, sprouting. But otherwise, you just got your part that's reverted back to a, an ancient type of apple. Well, that may be what it is because this kind of, it's, it's the, the smaller fruit is growing in the uh, what you call a Y or the wedge or two. Um, yeah. Two limbs. Uh huh. Well, you know, like I say, if 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 you can connect it down close to the ground, it's going to be the rootstock. But otherwise, uh, you know, we we di- we discover new varieties. Uh, I'll give an example. A lot of people know about Golden Delicious Apple. They may not realize that Golden Delicious started out as one branch on a on a, in a on uh, one tree in a an orchard full of red delicious apples. And the farmer noticed that one branch had yellow apples. He cut that off, and that's where all golden delicious apples come from, is a a, a mutation off of a red delicious apple. Ain't that weird? Yes, Yes, it is. Um, Well, well, they'll be edible. Is there any way that I can send you a pic photos of this tree? So, because you can actually, it this is a freaking nature. It just like you say, it is something that yeah. just happened. Well, uh, I mean, you you can send me pictures, but you know, at the same time, if you can get the county agent uh, there to come out and take mm-hmm. a look at it and, uh, and and see what he or she thinks, and then they can get in touch with him. Because otherwise, you know, I just say if if it tastes good, you know, let's cut it off and root it and call it. Milton's Milton's mini millions apple or something. <laughs> but yes, anyway, sir. see if you can get see if you can get the county agent to come out and take a look at it. And I am a first time listener. Well well thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Come on back sometime. I shall. Okay, appreciate it, Milton. See you later. Yes, sir. Thank you. Felder, let's get ready to um, let's go ahead and take our last break for the hour because we got a full bank of calls to work through uh, to take us to the end of the show. We got uh, uh, we're going to Mo- Moselle. We can go on to Brookhaven and uh, we're going to talk to Mark, who is on the road. All righty, man. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're back. Glad everybody's healthy. It is, these are weird days, folks. I'm glad I've got a garden to put around in. Sound like I probably need to bring me a canoe back than just to to float around on all the humidity. But anyway, there's plenty of things we can be doing right now, but there's also plenty of things just to think about doing. And um, anything I can help you with, give us a call, toll free one eight seven seven MPB ring. But um, I'm gonna be back in the studio next week. Gonna be able to go around and look at stuff. Glad my air conditioner is working. And uh, so I'm going to start getting ready to plant some stuff for the fall, a little at a time in the morning before I get too hot in between rainstorms. Ain't gardening fun? We're going to take a real quick break and come back with more of the Gestalt Gardener right after this. All righty, folks, welcome back to the last segment. We've got 15 minutes of just chatting about gardening, so whatever's on your mind, give us a call. We'll be glad to chat about it. Um, I get stumped quite a bit, uh, and, and I'm okay with that because we just, that's how we learn. That's how we learn. But if there's some things that you can help us with or guide us in new directions, give us a call about that, too, because this is a party, folks, and nobody likes to hog the party. Who we got? Uh, uh, we're going to go down to Moselle and talk with Liz. Hey, Liz, good morning. Hi, Felder. It's Moselle. Moselle. What did yeah. I say? Hmm? What did I say? Oh, I thought you said Mobile. 
no, 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 Moselle. Anyway, well, well what's up, Liz? It's, 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 it's my it's my my listening part must be bad. <laughs> anyway, I um my neighbor had to uh, plane down a forty one. Let me see, ten by one, ten by two boards. He had to plan, uh, plane them down from one inch to three quarters. Right, and man. There was a huge pile of shavings that he did not want, and I scooped them <laughs> up one feed pack at a time, and I swear I must have got two truckloads full. I mean, I got shavings. But yeah. but a, a bunch of them I just, uh, you know, put on the ground and to, to sprinkle cottonseed meal layer by layer so that yeah. it would heat up. Well, yeah. I went to, my cottonseed meal is, it's about two years old, it's 50-pound sack sitting out in yeah. the carport, and right, it's gotten right. moist, and yeah. it smells, it has a strong ammonia smell. Yeah, So yeah. I it, went ahead and I used it on the compost pile, but I was afraid to put it on any of the flowers or anything. What do you think? Well, cottonseed meal, it's got, it's got a lot of protein in it, and it can go rancid. It, you know, it, it could just plain go rancid. So I don't know. I don't think I'd put it around flowers because it may have gotten stronger or weaker. So, I mean, it will, you know, it, it, it's got oil in it. And so it may have just gone rancid. I'd use it in the compost, not around your flowers. Okie dokie. That's what I'll do. Thank you. Oh, I want to add one other thing. You, you're layering the, those uh, shavings with, with Kanzi meal. I'd also throw a little dirt on it, a little real dirt, because that's got the stuff in it that actually does the con- – in other words, you need to inoculate those shavings yeah. with some dirt to put the stuff in there that uses the cottonseed meal. So just every now and then just throw a little dirt in it. Okie dokie. Thank you, much. All right. Good to hear from Bye. you. <laughs> nice to you. Bye-bye. All righty. Wood shavings. Love them. But if you mix them into the dirt, it can cause problems while they're still green because it takes nitrogen away from your soil. It does not take away nitrogen to put it on top of the soil as a mulch. That's just one of those those uh, those myths, I guess. So who we got, Java? Uh, let's go to Mark, who is on the road. Still on the road. Hey, Mark, what's going on, man? Where are you from? Yeah, I'm from uh, Andalusia, Alabama. Okay. What, what 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 can we help you today? Oh, I'm down here at your welcome center on I-10 near the John Stennis Space Center, and I'm going over to uh, go out on the shrimp boat with a friend. And we always end up with a whole bunch of shrimp heads. I was wondering if those those were something I could somehow incorporate into my uh, fall uh, raised bed gardens. Yeah, you you can, but they're gonna they're gonna be a little smelly. You know, there's actually uh, a lot of chitin in there. Um, and, and they have some fertilizer value, you know, not a whole lot. But, but what I would do is just keep in mind, they're going to smell. So if you're going to work them into the soil, let's go ahead and put them out there and dig them into your dirt. In other words, go ahead and bury them. And uh, I don't think that would cause any problems at all. I, I really don't. Okay. All right. Good, good. Ha- happy fishing or hunting or whatever it is. What do you, what do, you do? Is, do you fish for shrimp? Well, is that what it's called? Yeah. Oh. Well, I, we I call it shrimping. We basically okay. we just go out on the on the on the boat and work the big skimmers on the bays uh, all night okay. long, and then come back in on Saturday morning. Uh, okay, so there's hunting, there's fishing, and there's shrimping. Gotcha. That's right. Mm-hmm. All righty, man. Okay, I hope the weather's good for you because it's been weird out there. You know, I, I'm I'm thinking I'm gonna be doing a lot of sweating. <laughs> <laughs> good luck on it, man. Appreciate your call. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Going shrimping. Yeah, what's that hurricane doing out there? Is it has it hit landfall yet? I'm not sure, but they keep uh, you know propping up these uh, updates, so you, we have to we have to stay vigilant because it is hurricane season. Who I don't I hope he wear. I know he's going to wear his life jacket, but anyway, it's just going to bring more rain our way. We've had plenty of rain this year, a lot of rain. Uh, I've had people swing by my garden to check on things, and I mean n- nothing is. Everything, nothing is done. My potted plants are still alive. So I know we've had plenty of rain, but, you know, that's what keeps us from being West Texas. I did get a call this past week from a lady who had a tree struck by lightning. She said it blew a streak of bark straight down one side of the tree and wanted to know it's going to kill her tree. And the truth is, 
sometimes it kills a tree, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it, it'll damage it and it'll take two or three or four years to die. Sometimes the, the streak heals over and the tree can outlive the rest of it. So there's nobody who can predict what's going to happen when lightning strikes a tree. It's just a wait and see type of thing. And that, that's a, and anybody that says different, just making it up. I, I taught the tree surgery course in Mississippi State, and I can't predict whether lightning is going to kill a tree or not. But anyway, let's slide down to Lincoln County. Let's go to Brookhaven. Good morning, Susan. How are you doing? Just fine, Felda. You're going to have a really, really hot homecoming. That's all I can say. <laughs> it is hot, hot. That's what, that's what shorts and T-shirts and a wide brim hat and cool beverages are for. That's exactly right. I have a question. My neighbor was nice enough to give me a very generous start of um, butterfly ginger lilies that are in bloom. I immediately uh-huh. brought them home and planted them. But I'm going to Atlanta next week, and I want to take a start to my daughter. Is it necessary to take the whole stalk with the blooming plant, or can I just take a rise on it, it'd be better just to cut it back to you know a few inches tall. I wouldn't you know I wouldn't just cut it completely off, but go ahead and cut it back to a little bit of a stalk to it, and 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 it'll do fine. I would not leave the whole thing because that's going to suck it dry. And uh, and it's one of the few gingers that's actually hardy outdoors, even up in Atlanta. Oh, good. So, okay, that was another question I had. If it would thrive in that, uh, I know you're not keen on planting zones but in that area so that's yeah. good so i just stick it in the, the rhizome in the dirt there and let it go that's right and uh, what i would do is i would work the dirt up and plant it a little on the shallow side and then have her mulch it really well you know and by okay. the way plant I, I, planting zones are fine if there's based on average low temperature and that's that's what i was thinking of you know it, it'll take the low temperature in Atlanta, maybe up in the Tennessee, but that's about as far north. But main thing is plant it shallow and use a lot of, of good mulch over it over the first winter. Okay. Do I need to fertilize it when I put it in the ground next week or not? No, no. I, we, we don't need to push it any uh, anymore. It may continue to put out a few leaves the rest of the summer, but the main thing, let's wait till next year to start pushing it. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Appreciate it, Susan. Thanks for your call. Okay. Right, bye-bye. She's talking about a, a ginger lily. Some people call it butterfly ginger. It gets about a oh, waist high, maybe a little bit taller, has clusters of pure white, really, really fragrant flowers. There is another ginger that's hardy uh, up in the Tennessee. It's called hidden ginger. Hidden because the flower looks like a, a plume off of a, of a, a 1950s marching band hat. And uh, it's a really pretty uh, torch-looking thing, but it's hidden down in the foliage. But hidden ginger and the butterfly ginger are both cold hardy, at least up in the Tennessee. All right, Felder, our last call for the day is uh, James. And I'm not really sure where James is calling from. Good morning, James. Hey, hey James, where are you calling from? What's up, man? Good morning, Felder. Good morning, Java. I, I'm actually from Atlanta, consequence, you know, with the first caller before me. But I visited yeah. my father here in Starkville. Yeah. And I got a question. He's got two mature peach trees and plum trees, but they they never bloom and they never produce fruit. What what can we do to help him to get some peaches and plums? Well, did, did he, say, he say they don't they don't even flower? They don't even flower. Okay, well I I got the problem nailed. We got different types of fruit, of course, you know, apples and peaches and pears and crates and all like that but each type has got different varieties you know just like there's a lot of different kind of tomatoes there's a lot of different kind of peaches and different kind of plums and different kinds do better further north or further south and that's the reason for that is uh, fruit trees tell when it's time to bloom by how many hours of cold they get in the winter time above freezing below 45 it's called chilling hours and uh, some, some plants need a 1,000 hours of chilling to even bloom, like cherries. Cherries ain't never going to make in Starville because it does, they don't get enough chilling hours. They do better up in, you know, up in K- Kentucky and in Ohio and Canada. Well, it sounds like he's got a variety that's better adapted for further north, and they're not getting the chilling hours they require to bloom. See, so it's real important when you're getting fruit plants to make sure you're getting the varieties for your part of the state. 
it's I think it's what they call a chilling hours issue. He's got varieties that do a whole lot better in Tennessee than in Starkville, and, and this is fairly common, by the way. Well, that's 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 funny you said that because that's exactly where he came from, Tennessee. So he, I know he brought him from Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and, you know, we, and where you know cherries grow up north, and everybody plants them in Mississippi. We don't get enough cold in most part of Mississippi. They'll never make cherries, but they still sell cherry trees. Well, it's just like when somebody buys a Granny Smith apple, we don't know if it's a Florida Granny Smith or a Mississippi Granny Smith or an Ohio Granny Smith because they're not all the same. So I think that's all it is. I think that's well, all it is. Well, thank you. I appreciate the information, and I'll pass it along to him, and we'll find okay. some better trees then. <laughs> okay. You know, so tell, him, tell him we said hey. Thank you very much. Okay. Hey, appreciate your call. Thanks a whole bunch. All right. Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff, Jala. A lot of a lot of stuff I, I wish I didn't know about. But there's a lot of things that I get calls about. And the most important thing about fruit and the landscape, what types do well in Mississippi, and are those which varieties different now varieties me, from North? Now tell What's me that? this, Felder. Why why would they sell, uh, just your example, the cherry tree, if it's not going to produce? If you know, like we know, it's not yeah. going to produce. Well, it's because people come in and asking for it, and if you don't have it, they're going to shop someplace else. <laughs> I mean, I've I've got a nursery catalog from the 1850s from Natchez, and the guy was selling cherries back then, 170 years ago. They were selling cherries in Natchez, and they don't never make down in Natchez. And it's just, you know, peop- you, uh, most people are going to try to sell whatever it is people want to buy. I guess so, because that's funny that you said it. Like, he knew that he had the peaches and the plums, but they don't produce. But, well, he brought his from Tennessee. But that's funny yeah. that they sell, them, they sell them at the nursery, even though they know it's not going to make anything here. Yeah. Not, not all nurseries do that, you know. I mean, there's a whole bunch of nurseries, and they're real particular, and they know to order the right varieties. But you go to a big box store, you can buy stuff right now that will, will not bloom in Mississippi. It either does better in Florida and it's too cold here in the winter, or it does better up north and it's not cold enough in the winter. See, so that's the reason it's always good to shop locally with somebody who's local, who knows you, and you can come back in there and point your finger in their face and say, do better. And that's true because you can't, at the big box, you can't blame the teenager behind the register for not knowing no. the right variety. That's right. You know, we talked last week with Herbie Austin, uh, and I try not to recommend any one place or the other, but there's a lot of places in Mississippi that specialize in plants that do well in that part of the state, the independent, locally owned places. Well, Herbie makes a, a point to only order fruit plants that would do well in central Mississippi, and I respect that. But anyway, enough of that. Folks, I'm, we're going to take a week-long break. I'm going to try to sneak back into Mississippi if uh, I've got to have a COVID test before they even let me on an airplane. Uh, but when I get back, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the windows down and then roll them back up and turn the air conditioner on real quick. We're going to be back same time, same place on Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Me and Java and all the other folks in Mississippi public broadcasting meanwhile if you get a chance take a kid to a farmer's market they got a lot of cool stuff that's grown locally and they get to, they the children get a chance to talk to somebody who grew or made the honey or whatever take them to a place where horticulture and gardening and people get together farmer's market meanwhile get a chance get outside